A question that I have been receiving with greater frequency is that I got a BenQ SW hardware calibrate display. I ran a calibration using Palette Master Element and it passes the validation. Yet when I pull my images up, it looks less saturated and a lot more dull than what I'm seeing before. The main question here is what are you seeing before and what type of display coding do you have? This is going to lead us into a conversation about display coding in general, matted versus glossy display for Pro Workflow. Let's find out. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Before we talk about displays and glossy versus matte coding, let's talk about papers in general, a photographic print. For example, if you take an image like I have the one behind me here, send it to a photographic lab, you have a variety of paper surfaces that you can print on. On the very high end glossy of things, there is a high gloss paper, which is super saturated and super high contrast. Then we have something that's a little bit more normal or standard range that we have been seeing for a lot of our lives. That is the glossy paper, which still shows really great contrast and also really great saturation. Then we start to move down the scale with the semi matte or pearl and also the matte photographic paper. And as we go down that scale, we start to see a reducing contrast and also a slightly reduction in saturation. And if we take this to the extreme end for a fine art rag paper that's printed on an inkjet printer, we even get less contrast and the color saturation may still be there, but it's not going to look quite the same as a high gloss paper. Now with that in mind, the display that we're looking at to view our work, it's a sliding scale very similar to the paper that I've just explained just now. So let's quickly talk about the setup that I have here. This is the 24 inch iMac running on the M1 processor and I choose this model in purple because I love purple, obviously, right? This has a glossy glass coating on the display. And if you have been using Apple product for the past 12 years or so, majority of the displays that they have are glossy coating. With the exception recently, for example, with the 27 inch iMac, you can choose to go with the nano texture coating or the Pro Display XDR. And both of those, if you want to go with a nano texture coating, it does definitely cost more. But by default, you have these glossy display. So these are in the iMacs. They're also in the iMac Pro, which were recently discontinued, and also in the MacBook, MacBook Pro, and MacBook Air. If you're used to looking at these displays, and by the way, this also applies for PCs. So if you have a PC with a built-in display, most of them are now going with glossy displays. You're looking at something that has more saturation right away, that shows more contrast right away, very similar to paper that we talked about earlier. Now, the great thing about these displays is that everything just looks amazing on them. You pull up a picture, you pull up a video content, everything says pop, and you don't even need to go in and calibrate them because they look amazing already. But the thing about these displays is that they're really great, but they're giving us a lot of bias. They're showing us these colors that are more saturated that has more contrast is giving us just a slight bias on the way how we're seeing our images. Not to mention, this is also calibrated to DCI-P3, which is very different than Adobe RGB, which is designed for photographic workflow. So with that in mind, those are the great things about a glossy display, but what are the downside? Well, for instance, reflection would be a big thing. For example, I'm gonna angle my display up here and turn this towards the light. You can see right away that it's reflecting not only just the light itself, the shape of light, but you can see in detail the egg crate that I have on my light to pretty much guide the light directionally. You can see that on the display. So if you're in a pretty much reflective environment or there's a lot of light going on in the environment that you're working on, these display will pretty much reflect everything that you see, and that can also be a distraction. So this is where it enters in BenQ SW display lineup. These are display with hardware calibration capabilities that's designed specifically for photographic workflow so they can show 99% Adobe RGB, and it also has a matte coating throughout the entire lineup. If you're looking for a model that has an extreme matte coating, you should probably look at the SW321C, which is almost paper-like. It's really just uncanny and BenQ is the only display out there right now that has that kind of super matte coating on their display. This matte coating also applies to BenQ other pro display lineup as well and that is their PD line pro design. But we're going to focus on the SW here. This is the latest SW271C. It is their 27 inch 4K hardware calibrate display. And again, it has some matte coating on there. So the matte coating on this display is really great for a photography workflow and it also comes with a shading hood should you want to block out the lights. But the great thing about this is, for instance, if I angle this up, 
you will see that it scatters light and it diffuses the light on that display. It doesn't mean that the light won't reflect on this and it will absorb everything, but it won't show you the shape of light very similar to the way how the iMac would. For instance, you can see here. This is showing an outline for the shape of my light, which is pretty much an octagon light. This is pretty much just diffusing it in general, so you can see the differences between the two. Now, with this said, this is not a critique on Apple about their display and what they have designed there, nor is this telling you that BenQ display is anything less than that. This is just pretty much showing you the differences between the two. But what's really great about the SUV display is that once you go in and run the calibration, yes, it does have less contrast, it does have less saturation compared to a glossy display. But the one great thing you're gonna get out of this display is true, accurate colors. So what you're seeing on the display right now is the way how your images are going to look, is the way how the images are going to print without any bias whatsoever. And that's the one great thing about having these type of matte coating on these pro displays so you can see exactly what you're getting in your workflow. Now, once you pull the images up, on these two displays and you start to compare them. For instance, I'll show you the sample right now. If we just take a look at this picture unedited at the moment, you can see right away, or at least I can see here, but you have to believe me on this one, that on this glossy display, the images definitely pop more. You can see the reflection of water pop more. You can see the mountain range pop a little bit more. This is unedited, this is capture as is. So obviously it does pop more on these glossy display. And as we go in and start to enhance them, wow, this is looking better than what is showing on the BenQ display right now. Let's keep going. Again, still better. But once we start to really refine that, you're going to see that the improvement in the image quality as you start to edit them, you're still going to see an increase in an image quality and the way how your picture looks on here is going to pop more, it's going to look great. But the way how it's going to pop on these SW displays are going to go much faster because as you start to enhance them, that bar, it's pretty much exponentially increasing as you start in applying these adjustments to them. And once we get to the end, that 80% mark where you're trying to go into 80 to 100%, when you get the images looking really good, they are now really close to each other. So what this really means is that if you have a matted display and you see the colors are looking dull, the contrast looking less, what that really tells you is that you just got to go in and enhance your images further and further edit your image to really pull out all those details that are in the files that you have because once you get there, they're going to look very similar to each other, but it does take a little bit more work on these display. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is just giving you an honest feedback on here. The one thing that you need to know is that if you can get your images to look great on these matted displays, they're going to look amazing on these glossy ones. But it's not necessarily the other way around because these displays, if you're trying to do editing on them, you're already seeing the bias colors, the bias saturation, the bias contrast. So those are some of the things that you want to think about when you're going through this. I also want to show you a sample, for example, with a portrait here. Again, this portrait in general looks kind of dull there, kind of pops out a little bit more here. This is just pretty much shooting available light to get all the details in the scene. This is in Italy, in Rome. But the moment we start to enhance that, you can see that it could start to come closer. And if I push this even further, it starts to even come closer to each other. And in the last one, where we really go in to do the final enhancement, the images look really close to each other now on these two displays. It looks amazing on there. It looks really great on these glossy displays on the iMac too. And by the way, both of these displays are calibrated. So this is calibrated with Palette Master Element, the latest version 1.3.15. This is calibrated with i1 Profiler, which is now running on the M1 computer. So these are all both calibrated. Again, I'll show you a few more samples here. For example, this one will be another great sample that the colors that you see there looks really dull. This one pops out a lot more on a glossy screen. The moment we go and enhance the photo, it pretty much looks very similar to each other now. And if we go in and push it a little bit further, you can see that it looks very close to each other. So again, to drive down the message here, there's nothing wrong with your calibration, what you have done. What you're seeing is just a really honest feedback about the way how your image look at that point in time. So for these meta display, it's just really telling you that you need to go in and do further editing on them to really push it to what you really want to look. And once you have a looking amazing on these BenQ hardware calibrate display, you know what? It doesn't matter what glossy display they show up on. For example, they can show up on someone else's iMac, someone else's MacBook Pro, the iPad, iPhone, 
Samsung phone or any other Android phone out there that has a glossy display with OLED, for instance, they're going to look amazing. So anyway, I hope that I'm able to answer that question for you about the differences between glossy and matted display and also why you may be perceiving matted display having less contrast and also less saturation or in simpler term, they kind of look dull. Like I said, you just really need to go in and work on your images more. If you have any questions about this, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified. And until next time, in art we trust.